So yeah, this is the last and the concluding part of the NumPy for data exploration as um, a series to help data analysts and scientists in their data exploration project. So if you're coming into this channel for the very first time, I welcome you. Congratulations, please subscribe, hit the subscribe button below to subscribe to my channel and turn on the post notification so that whenever I release, um, you know, in, insightful and very useful videos weekly, you get to have this um, as part of your notifications. And if you're a returning subscriber, thank you for coming and showing up again. Please hit the like button and share um, this for other data analysts to also be beneficial for them. Thank you. So in order to access um, 5,000 from this um, salary, you have to ask, your, ask, your, ask yourself a question. So where is 5,000 in this um, array? So if you look at this, so we've got currently we have row, row one, row two, right in this bucket list of array but in terms of row index number right so this is in index position this is index zero right and index one so 5000 exists first in index one right of row one right so this is row zero this is again this is row zero and this is row one so we'll access first row one so salary by row one all right so now that we are inside row one the question then is what position on row one is 5000 so in terms of position on the row level we're referring to the colon position so this is colon one colon zero rather colon one colon two colon three so we access colon one so it becomes one one so if we print this we have 5000 so this is how you would access you know, um, elements or members from a two-dimensional array. So let's give ourselves another one more task, all right? So let's say we we're interested in accessing all the elements that are in the position um, three, right? That are in position three across all the members of this array. In other words, we are interested in accessing accessing we're interested in accessing first 600 and 6,000, right? Because there is a pattern in the position of those numbers, all right? So how do we access 600 and 6,000 consecutively, all right, um, in the arrays that we have up, up here? So again, we have to ask ourselves the question, uh, what position is, is 600 and what position is 6,000? So if you look at this um, on the row zero, right? 600 is on row zero, right? And colon zero one two, right? So we have salary. 600 is in position in row zero, colon, colon zero one two, right? So that's colon two. So if we put colon two here, right, we have 600, all right? And then to access to access 6,000, which is on colon row one, colon again, colon zero, one, two, all right? So if we have this, we have 6,000, all right? But then, but then the task says access both of them, right? Independent, I mean, concurrently rather. So in doing that, concurrent access, concurrent access, concurrent access, of 600 and 6,000. So we ask ourselves first, is there a pattern in the positions for the numbers we're trying to access? So if you look at this, this is row zero, this is row one. So all the entries, the values that we're looking for exist in the two uh, rows, right? Which means we're access, accessing the numbers from all the rows, all right? And in accessing by index, all the rows, all the elements within a row or within rows in a N dimension array, we're going to use salary, which is, I mean, if you're very conversant or familiar with list, you know that when we have this, it means we're able to access all the members in a particular um, say row, right, or in a particular colon from a position to um, before or after a position, we're able to access using colon, 
right? So we're going to apply the same logic here. We're going to say that the colon would be able to give us access to all the rows, which is row one, row zero, and row one. So with this colon, we currently have access to all the rows. So now that we are accessing all the rows, can we access specific colons? All right, we know that um, what we're looking for exists on the colon index two for both rows. So this is on row one for row zero, for instance, zero, one, two. It exists here on row one, also here, zero, one, two. So we just specify that by putting zero, by putting two. So if we have that, that gives you access to be able to, you know, view the two numbers in that position. And then the same is true also if we want to set new numbers, right, or set new values for a particular set of um, elements in an array. So for instance, typically we can say salary, right? So let's say salary for, um, let's say we want to increase the value of the first salary, right, by two. That's multiplied by two. So increase, let's say the task is in, increase 3,000, which is on um, 0, 0, increase it by two. That's times two, all right? So how do we achieve that? We're just basically going to say on the position of 3000, which is row zero, colon zero, right? Because this is row zero, remember, this is row zero, right? And on this position, it's currently occupying colon zero. So that's zero, zero comma zero. We're gonna set the new number to a new array, all right? So we're gonna set that new number to a new array, which I just basically will say, um, multiply by two. So we're gonna say, here's the code two, so we're, going to, we're just going to multiply this by two. So how do we set that value here? So you know that um, in multiplying this position here, right, by two, we're just going to say two, right? So let's say two multiply. Two ways we can do this actually. So because we know the value in that position, right? So we can say um, this multiply by uh, salary, so I'm just going to copy all that I have here and put this here, all right? So um, what that gives us is when we have, um, yeah, so because we're using hex, mind you, this is meant to be asteric. So now um, we have to multiply that by two. And then if we try and access the element in that salary again, let's copy and check salary. What do we have in salary? Now we have that multiply by two if you look at this initial value initial value we had inside that was you know three thousand and now we have you know six thousand and then the other way i said we could have done this as well we could also have done something like this so if i comment this with the control forward slash to make that a comment and i say salary again let me just copy this all right so we can do this because we know the set state, the new state of that position, all right? We can just say equals to 6,000, all right? So this we can do as well. And then if we do the same and print salary again, we have the same number. And if we set this number, say, to 10,000, for instance, if we set this number to 10,000, we have 10,000 in the new entry, right? So we can access by either setting the states like this or putting the direct value, which is what we're having in there. And then the same is true also for division, you know, subtraction or whatsoever value or multiplication or whatsoever, you know, operation, mathematical oper operation you want to perform on a particular value. Uh, let's take it up a bit forward to say that if we are looking at setting different states or setting two different numbers or setting, changing the values of different numbers, right, at once, um, so let's say, for instance, the task is to change all the second colon, which is, um, let's say we want to change all the, let's even say the last colon, which is 7,000 and um, 2,000. We want to change it respectively to um, multiply everything by 3, right? So how do we go about that? So we can do something like this. We can say salary. So you know how we're going to access 7,000? 7, do you want to guess that a minute? Okay, yeah, so you can pause the video for a minute and check how you could access 7,000 and 2,000 conse concurrently. All right, so if you had gotten that right, you would get something like this. So we have 0, 1, 2, 3, all right? So we have on this 
we have zero, which is row all the rows, right? And we're looking at colon, this is colon zero, one, two, three on this place, and then zero, one, two, three. So that gives you three. All right. So we're saying that let's say we want to set the new entries into new values, right? So let's say we have um, on 7,000, we want to have 9,000, all right? And on 2,000, we want to have, say we are having the same 3,000 or the same 2,000 across, but say we're having 4,000 here, all right? So this would give you, if you do a salary again, you notice that 7,000 and 2,000 value here, this and this would have changed, all right? So this is what we now have. So we have 9,000 and we have 4,000. So this is how you can typically, you know, uh, navigate changing values or uh, making changes within um, a particular ND array. All right. So let's just to run the, this process up, we're going to increase the count to three dimensional array very briefly. All right. So in three dimensional array, let's just, um, let me see if I can just quickly copy a particular um, set. All right. So I'm just going to copy some values that are created and then um, we're just going to put that here. So now um, I believe that you might be wondering, I mean, this might look a bit tricky or might get a bit tricky to you, but it's, it's the same rule of thumb. As I explained to us earlier, right? Um, the first process that you have to do whenever you're working with an n-dimensional array, right, is have the first principal or family bucket, what you can call the parent bucket. So this is the parent bucket, which is the two square brackets that would collate every other entries. Remember that when we are entering the values in the two-dimensional arrays, we had first the big bucket and then we had smaller buckets of, of values inside them. So this is the big bucket, for instance, in this one, closed by this, and then we have smaller buckets, which are the child buckets inside each of, I mean, separated by, by comma. So it's the same thing that we're doing here. We have first the parent bucket, right? Which is outside this, I mean, with this outside square bracket, and then inside this um, child, inside the parent, we have a child bucket one, which is what you have all the way to this place. All right. So inside this child bucket, we also have, we also have like grandchildren buckets. So we have grandchildren one or grandchild one, grandchild two, grandchild three. All right. And then the same applies to the other child, main child bucket. So we've got two children again, children, child one, this is child one, and then child two to this point. And then inside each children, we've got, you know, grandchildren. So this is grandchild one, grandchild two, grandchild three. All right. The same applies here. So what this then gives you, right, is what you would call a three-dimensional array. And how do we find out about that? So if you look at um, value underscore one, for instance, you will see that you have a three-dimensional array. Why? Because you've got principally, you've got row zero, row one, and then at each row level, you also have sub rows. So this is another row inside the big row, right? So, um, and then of course, if you check value dimension, right, or end time, you'll notice that we've got a three dimensional array, right? The same applies if you're trying to check the value. So if I look at the value underscore one dot size, that gives you the total value, the total entries that you have inside this dimensional array. Because if you add everything up, you have one, two, three, all the way here, you have 24 elements, right, inside this array. So it gets a bit tricky when you're trying to access elements within a three-dimensional array. And this is the rule of thumb, right? So when you're trying to access values in accessing value or entries or items in accessing items in a three dimensional array numpy array the rule of thumb that i'd like to use is called the inside in all right so we can apply use inside 
or outside in rather you can use outside in all right so this is the approach all right so remember that we said we've got first we have the principal in other words we have the parent node which is just one this is one parent you only has you would always have one parent and this is the parent everything here is one parent so the parent has two children this is all the way to this point child one notice that everything square bracket is close to this point and then separated here this is the second child all right so this main child one and two forms the outer row so we have outer row in other words what we, what we mean by outside in we are saying outside row outside row in other words we mean children comes first followed by inside row in other words grandchildren so we have grandchildren followed by the colons colon all right colon colon which will be position for each grandchild within the principal within the family all right so we have each element each element or each item position so this is the rule of thumb in accessing members so let's give ourselves some tasks um, look at this um, series right and if if you look at this for instance let's say we're interested in accessing this 40 right the 40 in this position so how do we access 40 okay so to access 40 access 40 in val underscore one so to do that we're just basically going to say val underscore one first we need to access the principal role which is in other words we need to access the outside row so what is the outside row position where 40 is so i'll look at 40 right so this is the first child the first child stops here and then i'll ask myself is my 40 that i'm looking for here no remember this is outside outside row zero so it means it's not here it's definitely within the second row which is outside row one so it's here this is the 40 we are looking for within this place here so it means that this will be what row outside row one now that we are inside this row this outside row we are we are now at this level how do we access 40 so 40 existing in the sub row or the grandchildren row row we have it on grandchild row zero so this becomes row zero as the next level of index and then at the position all right the index position of 40 at this level is what zero one two so this becomes zero one two so i have two here so if i access this i would have 40. So this is pretty much straightforward in trying to access value and then the same holds also when you're trying to access series of values within a certain row let's say for instance we are interested in accessing all the 34 all right we're interested in accessing all the rather we're interested in accessing um all the the third colon in each row so this is 34 34 40 42 and 36 all right so let's say we're trying to access access or retrieve when we say access we're also referring to retrieve right so let's say we want to retrieve all the all third colons across across board all right so let's see how we can achieve that so again our rule of thumb comes in here so we're going to access all the entries across all rows so we need to access everything across all rows right because that's the pattern so we're going to put a colon which would mean that colon will be able to unlock all the rows that we have i mean the outside row that we have so now that we'll be able to unlock outside row we can access the sub row right inside this so um the pattern is that we're also accessing so if we've been able to access everything with this colon right how do we access each row sub row inside each of the principal row again we're going to access everything in that sub row so we're going to put another colon then followed by 
um, if we're looking at specific position of 34, 30, 4, um, 40, 42, and 36, you'll notice that they all exist on specific colon index position, right? Which is index position on this one, 0, 1, 2, right? So it's always 0, 1, 2. So always on 2, all right, across board. So just put a 2 here, and that gives you all the assets. So now you will see that we have access to the 4, 34, the 30, the 4, you know, uh, which are all on the third columns, right, across board. And then we can also set the new values into um, specific values. So let's say we want to set these values, all right, we want to change the entries across the second colon, right? So let's just take that as the second task. So we're going to take this, um, we're going to change change all three columns across board to five let's change them to 50 60 70 80 90 so we have six members there and 100 all right so let's say we want to change all these values. In other words, we want to change 34 to 50, we want to change 30 to 60, 4 to 70, you know, and all that. So to do that, we just need to equate this and then we'll say, we're just going to um, put the values, right, in this first big square bracket and then follow by the small bracket. So we're going to say the first entries that will go in here will be this. So first we have this value here. And then next, which is now this for the second principal row, we would have another square bracket. And what would go inside that would be this set of values. So if we equate this and we check again what we have inside value underscore one, we would see that all the values that you had there before will now have been modified, right, to 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. So this is pretty much straightforward in making changes within your uh, three-dimensional arrays. And then the same odds across board. All right. So now um, we want to quickly understand how we can, you know, um, because if you check all the arrays that we have, they're all existing as arrays. All right. So how do we change values or how do we convert a typical array, all right, in this order without, you know, um, structure as it were it's pretty much is a plain you know dimensional array how do we convert them into a data frame that then looks more presentable as a table right um so let's quickly and this will be the last thing we're going to do in this series and then next week we would continue the next series of um did you know monday would be how to take it off from the numpy array into pandas how we can then start doing proper data exploration this is important for setting the right um, the right foundation that we're going to, you know, basically build on in subsequent series to come. All right. So the topic here will be the subtopic in this one to round up will be how to convert a NumPy or, or in other words, ND array into presentable table. Right. In other words, data frame. So in accessing data frame, data frame exists as a method or function inside the pandas. All right. But you notice that we don't have a pandas right here for us. So pandas has several benefits or features or capability. One of such is in being able to create data frames out of your array objects or files. So you can create a data frame from your files. You can create a data frame from your arrays or anything as it were, okay? So um, to do that, we're just going to come up here in the import, and we're going to import pandas as PD. The PD is just, just, just you know, an, an annotation to say that we're going to access pandas by PD, right? So you could have used anything. We could say pandas, we could use pandas as, import pandas as P, you know, but just as a rule of thumb or as a convention, we're deciding to use PD. All right, so remember that by the time we insert any line into our Jupyter notebook, you have to run that code or run that line. In other words, hold your shift and press enter. So that allows us to be able to implement or import the module into our code base. All 
All right, so with that done, um, let's come back here, all right, to basically, we'll just look at a simple, um, uh, a simple one that we did here, which is the salary, right? Remember, our salary is currently, you know, a NumPy array, okay? So our salary is currently, you know, a NumPy array, so we're just going to use that as an example, all right? Um, or in other words, let's just even pick one of us. Let's just say we're picking items underscore one, all right, which is now a NumPy array. So if we check, convert, let's convert, convert this into data frame, right, within your code base, all right? So this is what we're trying to do. Okay, so in order to do that, right, um, what we're going to do, okay, is if you check the items underscore one, by the way, it's already a NumPy array, okay? So we need to convert this NumPy array into a data frame. And in doing that, it means that we're interested in converting the values that you have inside, you know, the NumPy array into a data frame. And how do you do that? So to convert a value into a data frame, um, we're just basically going to say, items so let's say we want to call these items salary or let's just say um let's just say salary in let's just call the salary we're going to rename that items to make it more descriptive we're going to call the salary in in sales all right so let's say this represents salary of three um staff or four staff as we have the total number of entries to be four let's say this represent the total uh, basic salary of four different staff, you know, in sales department, okay? So we want to convert this into a data frame. How we're gonna do that is we would use the key, in other words, the object that we created for the pandas, remember, is PD. We're gonna use that to access the method or function called data frame. So if I hold my, if I press my dot, and to check what what functions or what methods can we access inside the pandas, and it applies to across all the other you know objects of in, or instances of class or, or or libraries in Python on Jupyter Notebook. Okay, so if we hold if you press your dot and you press your shift and tab, you get to see how you can use you know this um, uh, functions or this this key what this key acts acts access to. So if I expand this, you will see, you know, um, the the typical usage, you know, of your pandas and what it does. This is a doc documentation of this pandas. So it's a pattern Python package providing fast, flexible, and blah, blah, blah. You know, look at all the features. So the one we're interested in accessing, let me just close this, is data frame. So if I press my data frame or press your D and press your tab, you get to see uh, a bit, a bit of a few selection that you can pick. So what we are interested in is interested in is a data frame. So uh, then we would pass the name of the array. So the array we're passing into this is items underscore one. Okay. And we have the opportunity to either set the name of the title or the title name or the title or the header name for our table. So if I don't do that, all right, um, and I go ahead to print what I have in salary underscore sales, you get to see that it assumes a default header name as zero. So it basically just picks, because it knows that this is one index, index, the first index is zero. So it assumes that as the header name to use for this table, which might not you know, give um, very descriptive uh, meaning to your table. Okay, so I would modify this. I would modify this by coming here to say, colons all right so we're going to basically going to give this a colon name and we're going to call this because we're saying this is salary um we're going to call the salary or we're going to say sales department salary sales department salary all right so if i execute that code again we have this properly you know labeled all right and then this gives you the position okay so this can be very useful right um in trying to um, create very good data frame, right? Which you can in turn, you know, um, just crop this out, you know, or save it into a file and then ship that, you know, um, as a list or as a data frame, 
for other investigations. So um, we're going to move this forward a bit quickly in trying to round up. Um, let's give some names, right? Let's pass another list that contains the name for each position of this salary. All right, so that it then gives it more description and then we can look at the table we'll see first on one hand the names and then on the other hand we will see the salary i think it makes more sense to do it that way all right so i'm just going to quickly create some buckets of names that will match the number of entries that we have inside this salary all right so to do that let me just quickly create some random names um would we'll copy that name somewhere and we're going to say sales name all right so sales name would then be um let's call this sales so this we have four entries one two three four okay so we need to convert this into an uh, an nd array so we're going to say mp dot array and close this so if we check what is inside sales name you have this array again we're going to go now to convert this array into a data frame remember the data frame um as you're seeing here right um i mean the array that you're seeing here has to before we can match it with the data frame that we have it also has to be or become a data frame so this is why we're doing this so we're going to call the sales name all right so we can say sales names just to indicate that this is a data frame. Um, I can call the data frame equals so that we don't use the same name. All right, so we can just call this name maybe to keep it simple. Let's just call this names. All right, and then we will call this sales name. All right, so this might be a bit better to do. Sales names would then be. Um, again pd dot which is pandas to access the data frame which is exactly what we did up here so data frame and what we pass inside the sales name will be names remember um, we can also put the colons right so that we can make it more descriptive so we can call this as a list right that's why i'm passing this as a list right i'm passing the colon names as a list so we're going to call these um, names right so if we open or check what is inside sales name now, you will notice that sales names then becomes this value. All right. So now we've been able to access or rather we've been able to create data frames for both the names and salary of our department. So the next thing we want to do is to try and see how we can match both together. And to do that, we're going to be using the concatenation function right within the pandas um, distribution all right so we're going to do that i will say pandas dot concat and the first thing you're going to pass will be the position of the entries all right in the new table so and you also have to pass that as a list so the first thing that will come in in the list will be the first will be what sales names so um the sales names comes here first followed by the um, salary data frame the salary data frame is salary underscore salary in sales comes next so additionally what we can add right because if you check the uh, method or if you check the the arguments that you can pass into your concat if i hold my shift and press tab you will see um, the list of methods of or arguments additional argument that you can pass into your um, into your um what's the word now into your um concat function you will see that you could pass objects which we've just passed we've passed the objects which are the um the two lists that we i mean the list that we passed in here that represented the data frame we can also pass things like axis you can pass things um like your join and several other things all right so what we're just going to pass in order to allow because this is what happens here so if i if i um let's say we want to show you what let's let's look at this what happens presently so what you would notice now right now without the hexes function is that it assumes that all the entries are representing unique values and positions within the new table in other words so it's basically going to arrange 
John with the index position, right, on the first series, right, under names, because names exist. But if you look, there's no matching value for the sales department there. That's why this is not a value, or in other words, empty. And then it moves on to the last person, is Tom, then goes on to pick the next, you know, um, entry, which is salary in sales, and then check again and see that, okay, you have your thousand, you have the values and all that, and then the corresponding index position for names would be empty. So, which is why we need to set the axis value to say that the axis position to use, all right, for this is match the axis one. This is axis one, this side, and this is axis two. So, what we need to match is axis zero, right? should match axis zero. One should match one, two should match two, three should match three. So this is in axis position, this is zero. I mean, this is one from index is axis one and then the names is axis two. So what we're going to set here, we're going to say axis one. So if we execute that again, we have the value, you know, arranged in this position, of course, in no particular order. So let's see how we can, you know, leverage, um, um, you know, sorting within data frame so again if you go back to your any of any position within your concat and press your shift and tab you would notice if you drop down that you could use things like um, um we can set you know ascending within this concat so if you move all the way down um you would see ascending as an additional um argument that you can set within your concat okay so if you check up somewhere let's see if we can quickly identify ascending as an optional argument within your um, concat all right so um yeah so you will see sort right so you will see sort um <clears throat> you will see within this particular place you will see that you can sort which is default will be will be false so if i come here for instance um let's say we want to um sort the value all right so what we're going to do is let's quickly see if we can sort we saw sort right let's see if we can check if that sort works sort equals to true let's see so with this sorted all right um is there basically any difference in what we have versus what we have now nothing changes okay so which means that this might not actually be what we need to use so in order to achieve sorting let's save this value into a placeholder i will call this um salary department we're just going to call it salary for sales all right salary table for sales so we can call it salary table for sales okay so we have salary table for sales and to check what is inside salary table for sales we have this okay so let's go ahead to see if we can sort this okay so in order to sort we can use the salary again and let's see if we can access sort values right within this um, particular so if you check you'll see sort values um, um, function right within the uh, because remember this is a data frame so this is now a data frame function called sort value all right which could mean that we want to sort a particular um, a particular table we want to sort it and then the question is that what do we want to sort it by so if you check sort val sort underscore values hold your shift and press your tab it takes certain you know arguments you know primarily it takes by and then you pass the index label right into that position so let's use that to sort so we have by equals what's the index position right or what are we in other words are we sorting by so let's say we want to sort by the sales um, let's sort by names for instance so we sort by and it says you have to pass that right it has to be an index label and then to pass an index label it has to be a list so pass this as an index in a list 
followed by it takes another positional argument which is ascending so we're going to use ascending so we have a comma ascending it says the default the default position of ascending is what is true okay so which means that um if we say ascending all right um equals true or rather if we do this so if we do this it means that we're sorting by ascending order so we don't have to use ascending because there's a default state of ascending that is set to true so which means if i just say sort by names it's automatically sorted by default in ascending order but if i want to sort it in descending order i only need to set the state of ascending to be what to be false so if i put a false here then it sorts that by in descending order of names and then you could also of course sort by let's say salary you know sales by department salary right we want to sort in ascending order of the value or in descending order of the salary right so we have something like this okay so you notice that this value now changes in descending order of sales department salary seven thousand comes for seven thousand and all that so finally um let's see how we can access all this information a bit graphically in other words how do we leverage you know some math plot library to quickly show or visualize the result or the information that we have here. so to do that i'm going to go up a cup here i'm going to import the math plot library so we're going to say math import math plot library math plot library dot pipe plots um sub library within that and we call this as plt all right so once we implement this um let's see what we have inside um so if i want to view let's say we want to view the um any of the values or position within our table all right so let's say for instance we're interested in seeing the plots so plot dot plots plt dot if you look at the functions that you have inside your plot you will see that quite a few you know uh, functions you have within the plot right you have the axis you have the bar you have all that okay so there's several you know um, methods or that there's several there's several um there's several functions right that you can find within the the plot um, function all right so what we're going to use in this math plot library let's just use bar all right and um, let's say we're interested in plotting the staff salary or rather we're interested in plotting the salary against the the names okay so for the staff name we want to pass we have staff name as names all right so this is staff name um, numpy so we can pass that here names followed by what else do we have so we have the salary the salary is inside salary we have salary somewhere yeah so we have salary under your array as salary in sales okay so salary in sales is called items underscore one okay so you pass items underscore one here all right and then we basically if you want to check other functions that you can access within the plot uh, within the bar so if i put my hold my shift and bar you will see the different you know argument additional argument that you can pass you can pass color for instance and in actual sense i'm going to use the color and i'm going to use width so the width talks about the positional difference between each bar that explains the width and the default value as you've seen here is 0.8 so let's use width i want to increase the width all right so i'm going to say width and let's set that value to 0.9 okay and then colors there is a color that we can pass inside um inside your bar all right so if you check where you can pass color did you see under other parameters can pass color okay so the color um takes um basically your rgb color code all right so um you know your rgb is rgb red green blue and then 
um, the last one is the opacity, which is whole, right? So the first thing that I want to set, let's just pick some values. Let's say we want to have a green. So um, if you check your green um, opacity, so you basically can, I mean, to understand all that, I can just say Google your, your, Google your friend and just say RGB um, color picker, all right? So you can pick RGB color, right? Um, within this place. So let's say I'm looking for somewhere, you know, I'm interested in picking this color. All right. So I'll just copy the RGB, all right, in this um, placeholder. Okay. So if we have this here, um, let me bring it back here, all right? So we have this value here. And then followed by the opacity could be, let's say the opacity is, um, let's say 0 0.5 as the opacity. All right. So um, to do this, remember, this is like, uh, this is because this is, um, this is zero, this is in, in order of 100. Okay. That's dividing by 100. What you would have here would be 0 0.3. All right. So you have 0 0.3. And then you have about zero. This is almost one. So I'll put it on nine, 0 0.9. And then this is also more. So I'll put this on 1.2, right? Because that's that's the same high. Okay. So um, additional thing that we can then do because we need to, to plot this is, so what we're doing here is to create a bar chart, create, create, uh, a bar chart, right? For names and salary, all right? So let's close this one. So let's test what we have as the result. Okay, so we have some arguments that are issue. So it says sequence should have length between three. Uh, in, invalid arguments 0 0.3 so in other words is pointing to this 0 0.3 um, element all right so um, to uh, let's see how we can correct that so let's quickly go back here yeah so what we have here as a problem or as a challenge is because um, the, the position of of 3 here Oh, so, I mean, let's just, it's, it's talking about this position 0 0.3. So we're just basically going to do this. Um, let's use this and call this 0 0.9. Let's just to test if that works first. Yeah. So this works. Okay. So we're then going to be increasing the point by gradually. So if I increase this to 0 0.5, this increases the brightness and then we reduce this to 0 0.1 we have purple so i mean this is basically you playing with your um with your point with your rgb colors okay so i'm just going to have a green for instance we have a 0 0.0 and we have say 0 0.6 i'm just going to play around this i have 0 0.4 and on the opacity, we have 0 0.9. We should have like green. Okay. So now this shows you the distributions, right, of the names, right, in this order. And then, of course, you know that if we are trying to, um, let's say we're interested in reducing the width, I can reduce the width further down to 0 0.5. And then this shrinks down the width. Okay, so this is how you could, of course, you know, understand various distributions and entries within your um, within your NumPy and Pandas. Okay, so uh, let me know if you, I mean, having any difficulty, you know, in following through this tutorial. Um, but of course, please leave your thumbs up or leave your like and your subscription um, to this channel on the. Um, on this space, you'll find the like button. Please like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much. See you in the next series to come.